hello 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 i hope all of you are okay my name is winnie and uh, i'll be taking you through asthma in today's class and we'll be looking at a variety of areas that i feel are quite key for us to understand when it comes to asthma so we'll use the concept of looking at it uh, in terms of um, definitions and then we will go all the way to looking at risk factors then we will check on the pathophysiology we will look briefly on our investigative procedures then we'll check on the management of our patient so welcome to my class and if you're new on this channel you're welcome to subscribe and keep watching out for new videos because we are learning we are talking all about health and diseases and learning on all medical causes that are available in the market so welcome and feel free Karibu so what is asthma in uh, you will find many books are defining asthma in different uh, orders but it all looks at different angles and asthma simply is a chronic inflammatory disease that brings out a hyperresponsiveness. Hyperresponsiveness is a state where it's more of like a, an overreaction to a stimulus. So this leads to recurrent attacks. For example, you find somebody who has an asthma, they get this attack several times depending on what is triggering them. For instance, if somebody is triggered by a pollen grain, you may find that in the presence of that pollen grain that's when they get an attack so it's a hyperresponsive reaction to triggers most of the time so what does asthma do mostly it's characterized with airway obstruction your patient may have this sense where they are not able to breathe because they feel their airways or the channels in the respiratory system are obstructed Okay, the beautiful part about asthma is that it is reversible. So if somebody is having an asthmatic attack, the status can be reversed if you get it to be managed on time. Uh, now, what are these risk factors that can make one get a trigger or can risk someone into ending up with an asthmatic attack? Number one, you can have allergies, which are actually stated to be around 40% of the reasons why people develop asthma. And allergies can actually vary all the way from drugs to an allergy to this, I mean, or to, to foods and other meals. People are even as allergic to spices, other than allergic to pollens or even uh, issues of flowers and so on. So it's for someone to know which is the allergy that I can actually trigger them. Then there is exercise. And in terms of exercise is the aspect that we, they say when somebody is in an exercise mode and they are putting their body into this mode where they are more activated, they say you have to be careful because sometimes you can overstimulate your respiratory system and end up with an asthmatic attack. Then air pollutants, this is simply an example of an allergy uh, presence. Then occupational factors, respiratory infections can also trigger an asthmatic attack all the way from viral, bacterial to other types of infections then uh, nasal or sinus problem so if somebody has a nasal or sinus issue can also trigger an asthma attack then of course we've mentioned drugs and food additives and of course we have psychological factors let's look out for stress stress is one factor that people ignore but if you are careful to know actually somebody can develop an asthma attack because of stress then we have now the pathophysiology of asthma. Here we are looking at an aspect of how does asthma develop in our body or how does asthma progress up to an end where you are seeing these symptoms that are presenting with our client. So number one, we've talked that asthma is mostly a trigger or an allergy trigger. And in this case, the starting point of any pathophysiology of asthma is the trigger factor. Is there a presence of pollen grain? Do we have a presence of... Uh, they say they change in weather or a presence of exercise status and all that, then it can trigger the asthma uh, stages and they will have the airway inflammation process. And I hope by now we all know inflammation is simply a state where there is um, temperature rising, there's swollenness, there's uh, tenderness, there's redness around the channel. It's kind of like a way on how our body tries to fight a change in our body system either from microorganism or from trigger factors and when all this is happening because of the airway inflammation the patient tends to produce a um, to have a state of hypersecretion of mucus because uh, there's an assumption that they want to clear away this trigger or they want to clear away if it's a bacteria or a virus or the pollens and all that they want to clear it away so you produce excess mucus a status of hypersecretion 
Then there's another stage that we call muscle constriction or in other stages of books, they will talk about bronchoconstriction. So with bronchoconstriction, for this patient, they will feel as if they have some, some tightness in their chest, like they can't breathe or they start gasping for air. This is simply because there's muscle constrictions and mostly it happens in the bronchus and in the bronchioles of your patient. Then we have swelling bronchial membranes. Remember, this is an inflammatory process, and one of the ways that inflammation reacts is by production of tenderness and swelling. So this swelling is another way that can make our bronchioles to, to reduce in diameter, and so the patient ends up with tightness in breathing. Then uh, all this that is happening, our breathing passages are narrowing or they are reducing in diameter. And so this client ends up with wheezing as a symptom, cough, shortness of breath, and even tightness in the chest. So these are a few symptoms that our patient will present with when they are having an asthmatic physiology, I mean pathophysiology happening. So uh, what is the anatomic change that is happening in our patient while they are going through this uh, asthmatic attack? Number one, we have this diagram what we have titled the normal airway and this is the look when our bronchioles are not affected by an asthmatic trigger it's well uh, open it's allowing air to flow freely there's no tenderness there's no swelling there's ex there's no excess mucus production but where there is an atom i mean uh, an, uh, um, there's a, a state of asthmatic attack our clients tends to have excess mucus production there's swelling because of the inflammation there's actually decrease in the lumen diameter that is the bronchioles become narrow and then these patients start giving you the wheezing you know the wheezing sound which is not a good indicator when you get that so that is for anatomical changes i think we and, can uh, get into our clinical manifestation so which clinical manifestations do you end up with our patient ends up with cough which is like the commonest symptom for most of the conditions that have asthma. Then we have a dyspnea, wheezes, then hypoxemia, which can be accompanied by other signs, which could include cyanosis. You will see this either by bluishness on the lips or bluishness on the tongue of your patient. Then you can have diaphoresis. This is excessive sweating tachycardia this is an increase in the pulse or heart rate in other words and then there's a widened pulse pressure then a patient could also give you prolonged respirations others will be have use of accessory muscles and of course you need to check out for behavior changes in case of uh, hypoxia that is uh, severe or uh, prolonged like restlessness anxiety increase in heart rate and blood pressure so those are the clinical manifestations that, according to the research that I did, are like common and present in most asthmatic clients. So what diagnosis will you expect most doctors to do when you have a client with an asthmatic disease? The first thing, as a medic or a, a health worker, you have to do proper history. Ask your patient about the history, what triggered them, mostly on the part of allergies. Get to know which allergies are actually affecting your client. So get the history proper and get the pattern of how the asthmatic attack comes about. Then there's some hospitals that can do for you lung functioning tests. So establish your, lung, your patient lung capacities or your patient lung volumes to see if your patient is performing on a good rate or there are some things that are constricting them in some areas they could do for you chest x-rays to establish that uh, if your querying could not be asthma then which other respiratory condition or other cardiac disease your patient could be having then there's arterial blood gases this is trying to find for us the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide that our patient has in the body then allergy test you just have to do an allergy test to establish whether your patient has an allergy to specific products so that you may know how to manage them better okay so having done that management let's... of our patient number one when you see this asthmatic patient or you see this asthmatic uh, symptoms please stop the exposure stop the trigger stop the risk that you know is exposing your patient to this asthmatic attack then there's the next part which is managing it by using medications and with these medications mostly there's a class of drugs that will be prescribed in common uh, commonly by um, the team that will be working with the medical team and that is the corticosteroids bronchodilators and antibiotics do humidification like uh, ensure your patient has humidified air this you can achieve it by giving them warm fluids or you can also give oxygen so give proper oxygen with either nasal prongs or other means 
last part is doing psychology some call support for your patient and also the family remember we said stress is one of the risk factors that can expose somebody to an asthmatic attack then finishing this with the category of nursing for those who are doing nursing calls these are few management that can actually benefit you when you are doing your patient or when you're managing your patient with an asthmatic attack that is looking at the severity of the symptoms do your proper assessment then administer the medications as prescribed or as necessary with your client then antibiotics is one of them of course if it's too severe then you can go into intubation but also remember do psychological support for your patient do humidification give proper oxygen and again ensure the risk factors or the trigger has been stopped and lastly what are the complications that can develop from an asthma of course status asthmaticus rib fractures pneumonia and atelectasis are the commonest complications that can come along with our asthmatic patient there are other ones that can develop but these are the commonest of and with that thank you very much feel free to leave for us a comment on our on our comment section or propose for us how to make these videos better see you next time